something I wanted to do really quickly, um, a bit of a, a shorter stream, but I've seen it going on a bit, and we'll ev- everyone in chat get your your thoughts in. But they were doing a Manchester City and Man United all time Premier League top starting eleven. Let's just throw that in the end because I think it's fun. But we'll do Man United, Liverpool, and City. You know, I think our two biggest rivals in probably the Premier League. Um, so we'll start with goalkeeper. I- I'll throw out a few names, but if you've got somebody else, please do. Just feel free to hop in as well. Obviously, got Allison, Pepe Reina in there, um, Edwin van der Sar, Kasper Schmeichel, Edison, maybe. I'm throwing Allison in there. I think Allison's the best keeper of all time in the Premier League. I don't. I think he's done it long enough to be a staple. I think the only other argument would be Casper Schmeichel. But my start is is Allison. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I think for me, it's it's definitely between Allison and uh, Peter Schmeichel. But um, Peter, I got, I got, I got, Kasper, didn't he, I? he did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. no. I'd, I'd, I'd go. I'd go. I'd back. I'd back our man. I'd go with Allison. I think. I think he's about as complete as a goalkeeper, goalkeeper that you're ever going to see, isn't he? He's unbelievable shot stopping, just an absolute monster in the goal. Makes himself look massive. Unbelievable with his feet. Even chips in with goals and assists himself. So, yeah, for me, I'm going Allison all day. To be honest. True. Yeah, I'd go. Yeah, I'd go Allison as well. Um, I just think he's shown like year in year out since he's been at Liverpool how amazing and quality he is. But for me, the other shout I would like, I just remember Edwin Van der Sar just watching him for be my longest period. He was always at United and just I swear to God he looked massive, but, like lanky and always just finger tipping save, just like frustratingly just watching. I think it was like the 0809 when it, like saves he made as we were cruising towards, you know, that those final weeks. I was like, this guy is absolutely insane. But I'd still uh, I'd still choose Allison because I think he's just the most talented and has like all around game is top notch. He has qualities that the keepers in the past didn't even, you know, ball at his feet, passing, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's just out of this world. Yeah, I think regardless of what you think, I think out of every keeper there Allison is by far the best. Even if you don't think longevity and career and, and accolades, he is the best goalkeeper there. Okay, left back. City don't really have a left back. Have a letter maybe? Nah. You know, so it's. I think it's probably between Erwin and and Andy Robertson. I personally haven't seen anything of Erwin. Um, and I think Andy Robertson's probably going to go down as one of the best left backs in the league with Ashley Cole. Um, so I'd go, I'd go Robertson. But Tom, yeah, Robertson for me. Um, just all around, isn't he? Great defender, great going forward. Obviously, his numbers kind of get overshadowed by trends a little bit, but the numbers he's put up since he's been at the club are just absolutely unbelievable for a fullback, aren't they? Um, double digits and assists most of the years he's been here, I think so. Yeah, he's just got absolutely everything. Aggressive, up and down, good defender, good going forward. One everything there is to win. So, yeah, can't see any arguments against uh, Robinson, to be honest. True. Yeah, I'm trying not to like rely too heavily on recency bias, but I do think the game, how it's evolved to today, like I'm trying to think of players in the older generation. I don't think they have the same skill sets that would be able to um, you know, have them thrive in today's game when you think of all that's required and how Klopp has kind of revolutionized the fullbacks going up and providing the majority of assists in those numbers. So it's hard to look past Robertson at that point, but the name I'll throw out is a shout as much as I hated him, uh, Patrice Evra. I'm curious to see how he'd perform in the modern game or, you know, at least in modern times. But still, I think just the way what I said about Klopp revolutionizing and how important Robertson is to the contribution and attack. Uh, Robertson. Yeah. Okay, we'll go Robertson there. So we've got Allison and Robertson. I think right back is probably one of the most difficult positions. Um, you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, Gary Neville and Kyle Walker. 
I'm going to try, try and be as unbiased as possible with this. And I'm taking me, as much as I can, take me Liverpool hat off. I think we need to go, we need to base this on pure football and ability as well as longevity and career-wise. And I think based off that, as much as I don't think he's a great defender and he gets massively helped out by his speed, I think I'd go Kyle Walker at right back. I mean, it's a, it's a tough one. I think you can throw Gary Neville out the window, but I think between Trent and Walker is very <laughs> very close. Um, obviously, two very, very different right backs, but they're both absolutely excellent in what they do. But... I don't know. I'm not going to go for every Liverpool player, but for me, I'm still going to edge Trent because I think Trent has changed what it means to be a fullback for me. Like before Trent, what like what fullback was that they played like him? Who had the ability on the ball like him? There's not beans. very, very, very few. <laughs> the way you can ping a ball, this free kicks, is all the set piece, the delivery, his intelligence. Just I think our Callum Walker's obviously blessed with amazing pace, isn't he? But what Trent, the, what Trent has to offer, I think, is a lot more difficult to come by than what Kyle Walker has to offer. You're not getting past him, but you, like I said, for me, Trent has changed what it means to be a fullback. So for me, I just edge Trent on that. Drew, you've got to decide and vote. I'm um, with you on this one, Charlie. Uh, Kyle Walker, although I think he wins out a little more just because of you know, if we're choosing Robertson, no, he's. A, at on his best, a solid defender. I think Trent can do the job there, but we praise Trent for what he contributes going forward. Um, and I think Kyle Walker does enough going forward. He scores some ridiculous goals. He's, you know, at least he's able to he's able to link up play. He obviously doesn't have the same passing range as Trent, but his recovery on defense, you know, as much as it is to do with this pace, like. You just would love to have that in the team, knowing that even if the other team has a breakaway, that you have a defender who can just get back and stop a you know a certain one-on-one attack. So I think Kyle Walker just has has enough going for him, and has been doing it for so long. Tottenham before Man City, that yeah, for me he'd be the right back. I think by the time Trent's finished his career in what could be ten years, if we're being honest, you know, I don't think it's out the world that he continues at, at this level for another 10 years. He doesn't rely on his speed as it is. So, you know, it, it's a possibility. I think by the, by the time his career ends, he will be looked at as the best right-back slash full-back in Premier League history. Okay, centre-backs. We'll name two of them. I um, think a lot of options here. I'm going to go with right centre-back Rio Ferdinand, left centre-back Virgil van Dijk. I think Nemanja Vidic is massively overrated and got absolutely terrorised by every good striker he come up against. I rate Vincent Company, but I don't rate him as high as Rio Ferdinand. So that's that's where I'm coming from. But Tom, your two? Yeah, I agree with Paul. To be honest, I think this is quite an easy one. Probably the easiest um, throughout the team. I'd go Rio and Van Dijk. I think you got everything you want from centre-backs, really, from them two, haven't you? The ball-playing ability, the dominance in the air. She's got it all got it all early, I think. Obviously Van Dyke has not done it for maybe as long as a few of the other options, but I think his prime, I, I don't think we'll ever see anything like that ever again, possibly. Like that was just perf- that 2018 to 2020 period was just perfection in a centre back, wasn't it? Just it was kind of un- unbelievable what we were seeing. So yeah, although he's lacking the longevity, I'd go with Van Dyke and then yeah, I think quite an easy one to put with Rio next to him, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Drew Yapstam's being mentioned, but I just don't. I, I I would take Virgil Van Dijk over him every day of the week. Yeah, uh, I would as well. I think that's the the easy pairing you two have already covered. Reason why? Um, so, company and I don't know, maybe John Stones, depending how much he wins. But he's already, you know, pretty old, injury prone. Um, yeah, I think it's easy. I'm not even going to try to think about it too hard. Virgil Van Dijk and Rio. Yeah, definitely. So, so our defence, we've got Alisson in goal, Andy Robertson at left-back, uh, Virgil van Dijk and Rio Ferdinand at centre-back with Carl Walker at right-back. So we're going to our three centre-mids now. I'm not going to say we need a DM. We'll just we'll play with what Liverpool are playing with at the moment. Three, three centre-mids. A lot of names here. I'll list a few off. Um, Roy Keane, Paul Scholes, Kevin De Bruyne, Yaya Torre, 
Stevie G. I think she, I, uh, let's get the the hundred percent in there. And you can agree with me or not. I think Gerard and De Bruyne are a million percent in that team. Not with me if you agree. Yeah. Okay. So we've got one position left. You've got Beckham, which Paul, I don't I think Beckham is massively overrated. Would not have him anywhere near it. But he's saying Beckham. Roy Keane is a very popular one. Obviously, Yaya Torre is up there, but I think didn't really do it over that long. It's a tough one. If I think you've got Paul Scholes as well. I think if I had to really take all of my hatred for Manchester United, I think I'd have to go Paul Scholes, if I'm going to be honest. So so my midfield three is I've got Paul Scholes, Kevin De Bruyne, Steven Gerrard. Tom? Um... For me, I'd go De Bruyne, Gerard, Keane. I think just for the balance. I think obviously Gerard's got absolutely everything you could do, anything you want him to do. Obviously, Ger- uh, Kevin De Bruyne is a bit more attack minded, can do what he wants going forward, and then obviously Keane can sort of do a bit more of defensive duties. Got the leadership obviously as well, which obviously Gerard does too. But yeah, for me, I think for the balance of the team, for the balance of the midfield, I think I'd just. Just about edge Roy Keane with um, Gerard and De Bruyne. Yeah. Drew, you've got the final vote. Who you got on with? I'm um, certain with Tom on this one. I think Roy Keane fits the balance quite nicely. I think Skulls, as he said, Gerard and De Bruyne kind of covered the aspects I'd be looking at for Skulls. And I would like the CDM or the more defensive minded person in there as well. And Roy Keane just does that to a T. So complete the midfield for me. Yeah, there we go. So our midfield is Roy Keane, Stevie G, and did I just say Kevin De Bruyne? I can't forget about KDB. Okay, so we'll, we'll do each position here separately. So let's start on the left wing. I think it's pretty obvious. I think we've got to go Cristiano Ronaldo. Tom? <laughs> Sadio Mane, he's the best football player in the world, isn't he? Mm. Nah, oh, it's no, Giggs, no, an no, unpopular no. show. No, no, no. <laughs> no, nice. no, he was good. Uh, Giggs, <laughs> Giggs is a longevity merchant. Yeah, that's all he is. He just played a hell of a lot of football. Is James Milner your best best midfielder in the world with Gareth Barry? <laughs> like, like no, let's yeah. be honest, if Ryan yeah, Giggs no. is not in this conversation. <laughs> no, Manny, Manny's a Premier League legend, but uh, yeah, it's Ronaldo. It's don't think it's too close, really. Obviously, won the Ballon d'Or while he was here, so. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's got to get the nod on this one to be fair. True. Yeah, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo. To be fair, I don't looking at Liverpool. I think Sadio Mane is probably our best option, isn't he? As that, that left winger, we haven't really been <laughs> off the top of my head. We haven't really been. We don't really. To be fair, since Klopp came, we didn't really play with wingers, did we? So it's a um, bit of a hard one. Right wing again, mm. n- another easy one. Tom Mohamed Salah. That's not even close, is it? <laughs> nah, nothing, nothing, nothing to add to that one. To be honest, just <laughs> we said, we said all we, what we need to say about that man, haven't we? So, yeah, I think it's definitely mm-hmm. Salah. You guys don't yeah. want Stuart Downing in? Oh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, you know, big Stuart, you never know. Premier League, according to you, if we're going Ryan Giggs, he is. So <laughs> longevity, man. <laughs> is he still longevity. playing? Um, yeah, I don't think we're being harsh with anyone else there. I, I don't think anyone gets a look in ahead of Ronaldo and Mohamed Salah. Um, Sterling, within a shout, but again, not really. Um, trying to think of other, other right wingers, but no. Mohamed Salah. Sane blew it up in that one couple of Again, seasons. no. Yeah, it's uh, not, not seriously, really. But, yeah. Now, probably the hardest position of the front three. I think if we're going purely off the best footballer out of all three clubs to play as a striker, Luis Suarez is there. However, he only did it for two and a half years. At the top level, he had a bit of a stinker. His first six months for Liverpool, two years at the top. So we're looking at what? Sergio Aguero, Wayne Rooney... And I think Eric Cantona is probably in the same boat as Suarez. I just I think the other two outweigh him. So if we're going off off them two, 
because I don't think any other Liverpool player really. Roberto Firmino, but no. Robbie Fowler, Michael Owen, but again, you know, I think Michael Owen doesn't help his case by leaving for Real Madrid, and I think Robbie Fowler's more of a Liverpool legend. Unbiasedly, I think I'm probably going to have to go Sergio Aguero. Tom? Tough this one, isn't it? There's so many options. Like even for United, like you got your Cole, Van Nistelrooy, Van Persie, really. Just for United. Um I think I agree with you. I think Suarez, what the season he put up 13 and 14 was probably the best we've ever seen in the Premier League. What he could do with a football that season was just majestic. Um the numbers he put up, considering he was banned for the first six, seven games as well, which is unbelievable. Wasn't blessed with a great team around him either. But um, yeah, I think longevity included as well. I think I'd, as a kind of false nine, maybe I just go Rooney. I think he should have left him, didn't he? Passing range, goals, assists. I'd, I'd fight about him. Won so many titles. Um, I think he had left him. So yeah, I think I'd sort of regrettably just go Wayne Rooney there. Drew, once again, you're the the, the side and vote. Who, who are you going for to lead the line? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with you on this one, Charlie. I think um, Sergio Aguero, like, despite his injuries, put up so many numbers. And I think as far as, like, Suarez would be my choice, but for, he's out of the question because it was really one season that encapsulated what he did for Liverpool um, versus Sergio Aguero. I think, you know, one of the most historic moments in the Premier League, but he was that kind of player where ball at his feet. Like, I remember when we beat, what was it? Beating City like four 0 or something like that. He came on and just laced one from thirty yards. Like this kind of player could score from anywhere, uh, any position, and just deadly. So for me, I think uh, I rate Tom Shadow Rooney because he did he done so well, had an amazing career. But I think Sergio Aguero just encapsulates for me what it means to be a striker, minus injuries. Yeah, I think it's a flip of a coin, but I think we all agree if we're going off pure football and ability, Luis Suarez is number one. That's all that really matters. But we've gone for Sergio Aguero with everything involved. So our full team is Alison Becker in goal, Kyle Walker, Rio Ferdinand, Virgil van Dijk, Andy Robertson, Roy Keane, Kevin De Bruyne, Stevie G, Ronaldo, Salah, and Sergio Aguero up front. I think that's really fair. I know people are asking for it as well. Let's I'll do a quick one before we end the stream. Who's managing the team? I think for me, his treble just pipped him. I'm going Pep Guardiola. No, I'm sticking with Jürgen, personally. <laughs> Yeah, you can really are. Well. Yeah, yeah. as, as much as I love Klopp, I think he's fed. I do. I, I think in Premier yeah. League era, I think he's fed. You know what? He probably is, but <laughs> I, just, I just I just adore the man. I think what he's done with the money that he's had. I mean, it is, to be fair, it's probably, I'd probably go Fergie top of them, taking me Liverpool that off. But in terms of Pep and Klopp, for me, what Klopp's done with, when you look at the net spend between the two of them, and what Klopp's done with that, I think it's just unbelievable the job he's done. I'd like to see Pep. I know, I know it's been a bit of an argument about you know the top managers always get the top clubs, but I would like to see Pep do it without just a blank checkbook. So until he does that, I'm going for Jurgen. True. <laughs> it's interesting for me because it's like if I'd want like one manager over like a decade or more, it'd be Sir Alex. If I'd want one manager for one season it'd probably be Pep Guardiola but for one game I'd probably want Klopp um so pick that so, apart for... so basically we are doing a manager let's just make that easy because we all love Jürgen Klopp far too much to put him yeah. anywhere apart from top um so we'll skip the manager but yeah that was a little a little fun segment but Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate all the comments. Um, if you haven't, please do leave a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel for daily streams at 7.30, post-matches, straight after the game. Um, and also the, um, the Star Strike for Sanfield Nights that we do every Tuesday for you American viewers. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Tom, Drew, appreciate you guys joining. Barbie and Charlie, this has been the LSU Transfer Room. And thank you very much for watching today.